Good evening and welcome to this April 24th special meeting of the Economic Development and Housing Commission. Tonight's agenda is available on the counter along with the request to speak cards. A reminder to everyone that res respect request to speak cards should be completed and turned in to the clerk prior to the completion of the staff presentation. For those speakers wishing to speak on items not on the agenda, but within the jurisdiction of this commission, please write the item number on your card. All speakers will be limited to three minutes. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised, so all speakers, in order to be recognized, must be called on by the chair and come forward to the microphone. Speaking in public may cause some individuals to be uncomfortable, so everyone is asked to be professional and respectful at all times. So with that, I'll ask Andrew to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you all. And our first order of business tonight is the swearing in of new commissioners. Constitution of the State of California against all enemies foreign and domestic against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California that I will take this obligation freely that, that I'll take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Thank you and welcome to you both. <clears throat> um, presentations by the public? Okay. Moving on to item 1C, Commissioner Communications. I'm not really sure what that is. I don't recall ever seeing that before. All right, um, item number two, consideration of the approval of the meeting minutes from our last meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Um, I motion to approve the minutes. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved, passed. And um, our next item number three, is a presentation on the 2019 Annual Action Plan for CDBG. Look at that, I got the acronym right the first time. This is not a, okay, good evening, Commissioners and Vice Chair. Um, my name is Amber Waker, and I'm a Community Investment Specialist for the Economic Development and Housing Department here at the city. So as the commission may recall, last January I did a presentation that kind of went over the CDBG program, um, went over the basics, and kind of how annual action plans fit in that overall structure. So the 2019 um, draft annual action plan before you tonight includes staff's recommended activities and the funding allocations associated with those activities. It is important to note that the draft plan and your staff report included an estimated grant award amount. Um, within the last two days, we've received our grant allocation, and it's about $17,000 less than what we estimated. So two projects have been recommended for 2019 funding. Um, the first is a frontage improvement project within the Washington neighborhood that would use up to $325,000. 
this project would be removing barriers to ADA accessibility, and it would be um, improving sidewalk and frontage along E Street between 6th and 5th Street and the north side of F between 6th and 5th Street. So these new improvements will be serving over 100 affordable units. Um, that's just two blocks west of this project site. Um, these improvements will allow the residents of these units to have greater accessibility to public transportation, riverfront trails, and really increase the walkability of the neighborhood. Um, these improvements are also in support of the goals identified within Washington Realized that really promote connectivity and walkability within Washington. So this project will be furthering consolidated plan goal number two, which is achieve goals within Washington Realized, and this was a high priority goal. The second activity recommended would be to fund up to $100,000 for a micro enterprise technical assistance program. Um, this program would be offered to low income individuals who are expressing an interest in opening or who currently own a small business here in West Sacramento. This program would provide a series of development improvement um, workshops and would also provide business, individual business counseling for them. So this project was selected based on the Economic Development and Housing Commission's and the Parks Recreational and Intergenerational Services Commission's recommendations um, in January and February. Both commissions recommended that some type of job skill development program be offered in West Sacramento. Um, so this program is in support of consolidated plan goal number three, which is strengthening economic opportunities for lower income households. The rest of the funding, which is about 95,000, will be used for program administration and planning. So this includes my, concludes my brief presentation. Um, so I now respectfully request that the commission open a public hearing to receive public comment. Um, upon closing the hearing, staff respectfully request that the commission take a vote to recommend that city council approve the draft 2019 annual action plan for submission to HUD. Thank you. Thank you. So our public hearing portion is open. See no comments from the public. I would ask the commissioners if you have any comments or questions. Oh. Okay, we'll talk really slowly. Commissioners, any new commissioners, any comments on what CDBG is, why we use it, what we're doing with it? Okay. Um, Amber, I might ask the $17,000, it's less. Which program, which portion of this is going to get the hit, or does everybody get the hit? Yeah, so um, as stated within the draft, um, the program that is going to see the decrease that will reflect the change will be the Washington Infrastructure Project. Um, but then also we will be seeing a decrease in our general admin because that's 20% of our grant allocation. So that decreased a little bit. So you'll see the 17,000 in the Washington Investment, um, the Washington Frontage Improvement Project and general admin. I have a question as well. Oh. Yeah. In regards to the microenterprise. Make, make sure your mic's on. In regards to the micro enterprise, I see that one of the requirements is five employees or less, including the owner if they're self-employed there, but also low to middle income. What is there a definition within the plan of what who would qualify as low and middle income? Yes, that is correct. So um, we it'll be eighty percent of area and median income. Okay. And then um, as part of the staff report, there's an attachment, um, and that attachment includes. Um, the household size for, for a four person, um, uh, the low the low um, income is 66550 per you. year. You're welcome. We do have one request from the public. Uh, Aaron, is it McHugh? McEwen. Yes. McEwen. Yeah. All right, Miss McHugh. Can I say Aaron? I say, yeah. Aaron. Hello, commissioners. Um, so my name is Erin McEwen. I live in West Sacramento, and I was here for the last January CDBG 
public hearing that we had and I seem to recall I know that so this plan is I'm sure they worked super hard on it and it looks amazing um, I just am wondering because I know our first goal was housing and housing stability and things like that and I, I feel like that has been resonating with the community and um, the people that I serve daily and I know it's hard for us to build it's hard for us to find low-income affordable housing um, but I know what is this fi about five hundred thousand dollars could go a long way if we talk about maybe trying to build something or master leasing or something like that I just know a lot of the the organizations are strapped there's all this money coming down from the federal government and state government that we're trying to figure out how to do um, programs and create more affordable housing but I know it is hard with the zoning and everything like this but I'm wondering Amber if you could talk to um, how our priority number one how that is going to be addressed I don't know if that is the protocol is if she can re-answer that but if that I know it sounds like the Thank you, Erin, for those comments. Um, so to address that question, um, I think uh, with this year, you know, the previous years, um, the last two previous years, we've dedicated almost 100% of our allocation to the Permanent Supportive Housing Project. And again, the five-year consolidated plan outlined four different goals. We had two high priority, but two low priority. But each of those goals we do need to address within a five-year period. And I think because um, our, recommend our recommendation was based on that the last two years we've provided a lot of our funding in that these last couple of years within our five-year consolidated plan, we tr we're trying to focus on these other goals as well. Um, so uh, I hope that answers um, Aaron's question, and if you guys have any additional questions as well on that. Thank you. And, and Aaron, you bring up a, an excellent point. It's something we talk about a lot because this is the Housing Commission. Um, my understanding of the CBDG, oh my gosh, I did it right once, CBDG, yeah, that grant is that um, it can't be used to build housing. It can be used to do things like make the sidewalk ready, so therefore a developer doesn't have to do that cost. So it is a way of encouraging affordable housing within the confines of that pot of money. But we did talk, too, about making sure that what we could do with that money to help people be gainfully employed and make money so that they can they can afford to live in a place. And I think that's equally as important. Um, Andrew? Yeah, I was actually going to point out that the parcel that the improvements are on for the sidewalk improvement location, that is currently for sale. Do you know if there's a planned development there that are, are there like active negotiations? Is the city involved in that at all? Um, unfortunately, I, I do not know okay. the answer to that. I I can I the it's being actively marketed. There's no transaction pending that we know of, but we we're only working within our existing right of way. So we, we would have whatever permission we need to complete the improvements. Thank Other you. Questions? All right. So you're looking for us to uh, recommend that the city council adopt this plan. Correct. All right. Do I have a? I, I think you have to close the hearing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments? Okay. The public hearing is closed on this matter, and now do I have a motion to recommend that staff take this plan to the city council? I'd like to make a motion to to move it forward. I am happy with the allocation of funds and what we have done in our previous years with the C CBDG grant, and I'm very happy with all the thoughtfulness that has gone into how to take care of our most needy community members. Thank you. A second? I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
right. The motion carries. Uh, item number four, we're going to hear about the business assistance program. Good evening, commissioners. Welcome new commissioners and vice chairwoman. Um, I am Katie Yancey. I'm the community investment manager in the economic development department for those of you that are new to the commission. I have a short presentation tonight that I'm going to be sharing with Diane Richards, who's uh, our economic development coordinator, senior program manager in the department. Uh, she's going to get into details about one of the programs that, or two of the programs that we'll be bringing forward this evening. But I wanted to give you an overview and an orientation on how these programs that we're recommending in the staff report how they fit into the overall work that we're doing under the Community Investment Fund strategy. I do. Can you move it to slideshow, though, please? So I can go through it. Thank you. And we'll begin. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Ashley. Ashley, would you mind hitting the next slide? This is not working. Thank you very much. So as I mentioned earlier, the Community Investment Fund Strategy in your staff report, it talks about that this was created in 2012 as a response to the loss of the redevelopment agency. And just to orient you, um, there are a variety of objectives that occur. Um, and not every project meets all these objectives, but this is sort of the global thinking that goes into how we are using our community investment funds, which includes the Measure G funds, which is discussed in your staff report, as well as the funds that are coming into the new um, enhanced infrastructure financing district which are just a form of property these are all forms of property taxes that are set aside to be used for these uh, specific activities uh, I just wanted to touch on a couple of these um, these core objectives um, so first and foremost in, in addition to sort of growing this uh, this funding source and continuing to invest in revitalization in the community we've also picked up some additional core objectives which include looking at projects that reduce greenhouse gas emissions so we've become very familiar with the data related to our uh, our labor force and Diane will be speaking to that a little bit later but in in total I just wanted to uh, make this Commission aware that only about 13 percent of the labor force that's in West Sacramento are actually residents so we are importing and exporting a large amount of jobs and that means that's a lot about a lot of automobile trips that are on um, our roads which are adding to our greenhouse gas emissions so we added that as one of our core objectives as well uh, Diana will also be talking about the types of uh, jobs that we're trying to target to bring into this community so that we have a better match with the with the residents that we have here or the residents that we want to attract to West Sacramento um, and versus this importing and exporting of jobs that's happening on a daily basis and then generally speaking when we're talking about aligning the community investment funds what we're really talking about is leveraging other funds that are coming in the city is very successful in going out and getting grants and what that really means is that we're attempting to make sure that all of our projects serve more than one purpose have more than one objective and so that we're really leveraging those dollars using them you know three four times over to meet several objectives in the city next slide please so we have identified core activities that sort of fall under those objectives, and these are the activities that we'll be, we are uh, spending these community investment funds on. Primarily, as mentioned in your staff report, they have been capital improvement projects. So projects that we are looking to deliver, again, to invest in that revitalization. And uh, there's existing project criteria that I'm just going to read a few for you. So again, it talks about leveraging outside funding sources, as I mentioned earlier, having regional impact, being consistent with the council's uh, strategic plan, and to the extent possible, um, to to be able to capture what that return on investment is for those. So I just wanted to point that out, that that's a big drawing, a big force of our money is going into those capital improvement projects that are meeting those uh, criteria. Tonight, we're going to be asking for your blessing to proceed with um, three recommendations that are related to the economic development programs. Those so far have been 
our most unfunded programs, um, core activities out of the community investment fund. So we're looking with this new budget to beef up those core activities. And then the last core activity that we have is real estate transactions. And we have spent a significant portion of these community investment funds on acquiring and assembling land, which has traditionally been activities that the former redevelopment agency did. But when we lost the agency in 2012, new tools came into effect over the past couple of years, and the city has been exploring using those tools. So we, we've been spending a lot of our energy on the project delivery side and a lot of our energy on the real estate transactions, and now we're, we're bringing this focus back into the economic development programs. And some of those were presented sort of like in a workshop, um, I think in November, to this commission. Next slide, please. So those recommendations really fall into three categories. It's a bank of impact fee credits, um, which we're looking to ask the council to give us $800,000 over the next two years out of our Measure G funds. And this will be restricted for use in Washington in the Central Business District, which you can see in the diagram there, that overlaps with the Opportunity Zones. We're also looking to do a small business expansion and a business uh, assistance and relocation program that's $200,000, that'll be citywide. Those, so that million dollars total over the next two years could potentially be augmented with the Green Means Go SAGHOG pilot program, which Chris Doherty will be talking about after we conclude this presentation. And so we may have a potential funding source, a one-time injection of funds, potentially up to like $4 million if, if the ask that we put into SACOG goes forward to fund these two programs. You can think of this as a, a, a we're going to try it out with our community investment funds money and potentially create a program that could uh, attract additional funds. Again, that leveraging funds uh, that I mentioned earlier. And then the last one-time funding source that we're looking for is to uh, go out and um, market our Opportunity Zones. So Opportunity Zones are a new community development tool that came out of the tax reform bill and we're asking for $150,000 dollars to one better understand what our role is in marketing opportunity zones make sure that we're creating robust literature to get out and get people to understand what the investment opportunities that we have there and then we're attempting to align those investments with those capital improvement projects that I mentioned earlier under that project delivery core activity. So we're looking to kind of, again, leverage our own dollars with, with these uh, opportunity zones. So that concludes my portion of the presentation. I'm going to invite Diane up to talk about some of the details related to those economic development programs. I know she talked previously about some of the criteria or the terms that would be there, and she's going to continue that conversation with you this evening. So I'll invite Diana. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and vice chair, and welcome to the new members. Uh, I'm Diane Richards, and I'm economic development manager with the city's department here. And um, I have, uh, I wanted to give you kind of a snapshot of the city's economy um, as we embark on this conversation. So um, these are some of the most recent statistics that we have gathered with the help of one of our um, partners. I have to raise this up a little bit. Um, and one of the things that um, you'll notice, and I realize this is a lot of data to absorb, so I'll just highlight a few things. Um, our educational attainment, 35% um, have some college and as you can see, um, you know, that's growing all the time, but that's, that's comparatively smaller than many of our neighboring communities. So that's something that affects our ability to um, attract jobs and businesses. Um, the unemployment rate right now um, is not shown on here, but right now our unemployment rate in West Sacramento is 3.6%. That's the lowest it's been in, I think, the past 20 years. Um, and the other unusual thing about West Sacramento is that our labor force is about 27,000 and our workforce is 28,000. So we actually were very unusual in that sense of the, of, uh, compared to other cities as well because many cities have a jobs housing imbalance and we are almost, you know, uh, you know, we have kind of the opposite problem. We have more jobs coming in um, and we have residents going out of the city um, to, uh, to work and you'll see that in the next slide. Um, Let's see, is this working? Okay, could you advance that? Um, actually, let, let's go back one more. I wanted to make one other comment on this um, data here. So you see the top industries by jobs. Um, 
retail and public administration in terms of the number of jobs that we have in the, in the community. Those are our two highest. And there's actually one data point missing on here, so I'll tell you what that is. That's services. Services is actually the largest employer in our community with 7,605 jobs. So those are, that's kind of the characteristics of, you know, of our, um, of our job base. And then you can see top jobs by occupation. Um, here it's a little, you know, uh, more positive story. We have sales jobs, office and administrative support, executives and managers and administrators, um, and then production and construction kind of picking up the bottom there. Um, a couple of our major employers here, Bailey's Family Fine Stores, uh, Unify, Tony's Fine Foods, another long-term member, major employer, 800 plus employees in the community. Um, Bayer Crop Science is a good example of the type of company that we're really seeking to attract, where there's a lot of scientific jobs, there's R&D <coughs> going on, they're very <coughs> engaged in the community. Um, so those are kind of just highlights there. So we can uh, advance to the next slide, please. Um, this table, I apologize in advance, uh, it is hard to read, but I just want to highlight, and this is actually um, some really good work that was done in the Pioneer Bluff um, transition plan. Um, but as you can see there, and, and what I really want to point out to you is just the, the green numbers. Um, so you have the labor force on the left, which is, of course, our community, those are our residents, that's where they're employed. And then the workforce is actually the jobs in the community. And as you can see, we are importing, it, by the green numbers there, we are importing manufacturing workers, wholesale trade, retail trade, as well as transportation and warehousing. So we have this huge influx of people coming in to work at companies in West Sacramento. Um, and predominantly in those industries because we are located on, on the at the convergence of all these major, major highways. We have a tremendous amount of industrial space you know, that was built many, many years ago. We have the 12% of the region's industrial inventory. So naturally, our job base and our businesses are going to be more industrial. And so that's kind of the paradigm that we're in. We, you know, we as a city, that's not where we're going. That's where we've been. <clears throat> and so, um, but you know, with 17 million square feet of industrial inventory, you know, that's, that's going to dictate now where our business and industry are going. And that's, you know, that's changing. That's why the emphasis on mixed use and these other districts that are waterfront districts, we're changing and we need to align our programs, our economic development and business attraction program with that strategy. And so that's, that's kind of what we want to talk about tonight. Um, the other um, quick fact I want to point out here is if you'll see the red uh, jobs um, exporting, we have, um, we have people leaving the city um, that are employed in educational services, healthcare and social services, uh, and public administration. And that seems very odd to me, um, considering we have a college here, we have city hall, we have a lot of actual, you know, we actually have a lot of state offices and things. But it's clear that um, the population is employed in those industries and there are not enough jobs in West Sacramento for those for those sectors. So that's another just key takeaway here. Um, okay, next slide. So what we would like to do, um, and we talked about this in November, we talked about um, we have, a, we have a preponderance of small business. We have 75% of the 2,000 businesses in the city have less than 10 employees. And that number was shocking to me, even though I've been here many years, it's still shocking to me to know that 75% of our businesses are small businesses. And so that's really important. That's another reason why we're emphasizing in the Community Development Block Grant Program, the Micro Enterprise Program. Um, we can do more for our small businesses. We can do more to grow jobs in those sectors. And as, as many of you probably know, small businesses create more jobs, generally speaking, than, than larger businesses. Um, so um, when we were here in November, we talked about and, and got, I think, a consensus from the commission that you know we needed to have some other tools. We talked about tools that we had had in the past where we had a business loan program, we had uh, the enterprise zone, we had a lot of tools at our disposal and we were able to attract businesses and help existing businesses grow and that's really important too. I don't want, you know, if I want to emphasize anything, it's that we need to keep the businesses that we have and make sure that we 
are supporting their growth, especially if they are growing the jobs. And I'll give you an example. Tomra Food Sorting is a company that assembles uh, food sorting equipment in town. They are growing leaps and bounds. They're here to serve the agricultural industry, but they have a number of technical sales, engineering, um, and service jobs in West Sacramento, and they are growing those jobs. They are going to add uh, and convert warehouse to office, and we really want to be able to support that. And, and uh, at last meeting, we talked about change of use and the implications and costs that come with converting warehouse space to office. There's a lot of costs involved in that. And so this, this program that we're proposing would be a way that we could, you know, sprinkle a little bit of, you know, uh, support on those types of jobs and those types of businesses. Um, and this is a very modest amount of money. Um, as you see here, you know, uh, 200000 that's what's being proposed for the next two years. So really, this is kind of a toe in the water. Let's, let's see what we can do. Let's see um, how we can structure this program and, and, um, and really just, just try it out. I consider this to be a pilot program. Um, <clears throat> you know, for 200000 we might be able to do, you know, depending if it's, let's say it's $25,000 per company, or let's say it's 25000 they relocate, you know, five new jobs. So you might be able to do, you know, um, six or eight companies. But if we did 50 or 100, you know, two businesses, and we'd be done for the year. So that's why one of the criteria that we want to um, make sure um, is that it's an invitation by economic development. So it's not going to be for every business. It's going to be for those businesses that meet the city's community investment goals, and do something for the economy. And, and, and I've listed a couple of these things here. Um, <clears throat> so in addition to small businesses, um, headquarters. Headquarters are important because they generally, A, have a point of sale, which generates sales tax directly to the city far more than a business that has a headquarters elsewhere. So that's a really important component. Um, the professional and technical jobs I touched on already, R&D is another type of business that invests significantly in, in um, employees, training, um, and create the kinds of jobs that we would like to have. Um, the second piece there is uh, innovation and co-working spaces. We're um, somewhat lagging behind the region in terms of having co-working spaces and innovation spaces, accelerator spaces, where businesses um, in the technology sector or in the scientific sector can um, you know, feed off one another and learn from each other. Um, and so we would like to, if we have opportunities there, we would like to encourage that behavior. Um, the criteria, again, um, and these will be, these will largely be performance metrics as well. Um, invitation from the Economic Development Department and a recommendation from the Economic Development Director. Uh, job creation, we would like to encourage STEM jobs. And in this case, actually, we've added, since we were here last time, we added arts. The city has a big emphasis on arts and arts development and public art. We would like to encourage artisans um, and that kind of activity in the city. We have a lot of old warehouses that could be potentially converted to artist spaces, lofts, you know, I mean, there's, there's lots of potential there in, um, in terms of this older industrial inventory. Um, especially in some of the waterfront districts that now have these old industrial buildings and they can no longer be used as they phase out. They will no longer be allowed to locate industrial uses there. So um, we've added arts, um, but these are the types of jobs that we're hoping to encourage with this pilot program, business assistance. Um, the other criteria, a significant capital investment. We want to get a return on our investment. So if we invest $50,000 in a business, we want to see that that gets returned five or tenfold, you know, if not in the first year, then within three years. Um, purchase of local goods and services, that is an important one, and I would add there, too, that um, employment of West Sacramento residents is a very important thing for us in terms of the return on investment to the city. If a business we have a lot of businesses that are not resident. They, you know, they have employees here, but they're not living here. And the return to the city, um, in terms of a business and living in the city, is you know, it's ten times what it would be. So we want to encourage that. So 
this program could encourage um, businesses locating in the city um, could provide per perhaps a, an incentive or a bonus to them to purchase homes in West Sacramento, lease homes in West Sacramento, in addition to bringing those jobs into the city. So those are, um, those are the main criteria I wanted to cover uh, today. Um, I don't, I think the other key point, it was in your staff report, but I'll call it out to you now. Um, we're modeling this somewhat after some other um, programs that have been successful in the region. One of them is Sacramento's, and Rancho Cordova has a similar program. Our partner, Greater Sacramento Economic Council, has found that technology scale-ups have been attracted with this forgivable loan program, whereby it starts out as a loan at market rate interest, and then if they create the jobs and meet their performance metrics, then the loan, a third of the principal, is forgiven each year. So that at the end of the three years, if they have met all their performance metrics, the loan, in fact, becomes forgivable and it becomes a grant. So that's a, that's a key um, performance metric of the program that we would, uh, we would hope that you would support. And uh, for the reasons that are articulated in the staff report, we're going to be getting a lot more in terms of community benefit, um, quality of life, um, return on investment in terms of sales tax, property tax, as well as creating the jobs that our community and our residents can aspire to. So that concludes um, my remarks. And um, as Katie mentioned, we're looking for your feedback and also the recommendation. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So. I open the public meeting. Um, this, this isn't a public hearing. Okay. But I'm happy to take questions if there are any or comments. And uh, if not, I will sit down. Commissioners, questions? I, I, I don't have a question, but I am just really impressed at what a creative solution that you have have put together here. I think it was pretty impressive. And I, and I like all of the factors that that sort of make a win-win for the residents and for our city. So I thought it was, it was awesome. Thank you very much oh, for all you. the hard work. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to figure out how to do this. Um, thank you for the presentation. And I just had a, a couple quick questions. And I didn't, if you, if it's contained in the staff report and I missed it, please just point me to the, um, to the page. What I was hoping to obtain is any statistics or data that help us understand or help me understand um, the community at large and what they may already bring to the table in terms of existing businesses relocating to West Sacramento that may fit within that criteria or the, um, the, the skills and education level of um, uh, the community that may feed into the jobs that um, that would be provided by businesses like that to determine um, if we are bringing new businesses into the community or if there is an opportunity for existing residents who have businesses that fall within one of these criteria that could potentially be relocated to West Sacramento to help alleviate the greenhouse gas issue um, that was previously discussed so that they can kind of dovetail each other. Okay. Before you answer that, actually, I, I, my question was almost identical to hers, but it's, I'm just going to phrase it slightly differently, and okay. maybe you can answer both of them at the same time. Um, so my, my question was uh, kind of twofold. One, around workforce development, and if there is any part of the plan that is around, like, upscaling our current residents to prepare them for those jobs. It's almost, you know, just a different way of asking the same question, but um, just focusing on that workforce development piece. And secondly, um, when it comes to upscaling, is there any be there in 10 years, not the jobs that are there now, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. th thank you so much for indulging me there. I want to be sure I understood your comment and question, and that is related to if there are existing residents that have businesses here, getting the data on that, and then also uh, making sure that that's a component of our program, right? Was that? 
it was what I was what I had on my mind when I was thinking about that question is is the last presentation and trying to reduce greenhouse gases and how we can benefit existing residents who may already have companies that fall within the uh, eligibility criteria and hey how can we help our existing residents yes. and um, through their current businesses and then also help existing residents uh, residents who could obtain jobs within that but I wasn't quite sure um, what kind of skills and education would be required for these jobs? Hence my workforce development right, question. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and um, I should have mentioned that one of the reasons that we have targeted these types of jobs is because there is a considerable emphasis on the city's part with the home run and our internship programs to, in fact, have more opportunities for our students to have internships at these types of companies and these types of businesses. Um, so um, that's, you know, that we hope that that matches up. We hope that by attracting more of these kinds of businesses and having those kinds of jobs, there is more opportunity for our students and our residents to, in fact, intern with local companies. Right now, that, you know, that's working, and we've had a lot of internship interest, but it's one of the things I talk to businesses about when I go and meet with them. Um, did that? I want to be sure I addressed your. your kind of like half halfway there. I, I okay. guess um, to her, point, I think the the idea that our residents are ready to take on some of these jobs as it stands today, based on the education demographics that you shared, there may be a need to upscale some of our existing residents to make sure that they're ready for those jobs. Mm -hmm. um, that's part one. Mm -hmm. Part two would be looking at things like internships, but more formally recognizing that relationship, so that if you're going to be uh, a participant in any one of these loan programs that you don't just consider internships they're a requirement mm -hmm. it's a formal okay. agreement with the city that yes we will you know take high school and college students for paid opportunities you know that sort of thing I thank you that's a great recommendation yeah did that help answer your question too or okay Thank you. Excuse me. I just wanted to add something to the commissioner's question. So um, when I earlier did the presentation where I was describing sort of the core activities, I did not mention workforce development as one of the core activities that was identified in the Community mm -hmm. Investment Action Plan back in 2012. It, it is not an identified core activity. I recognize that there, that there is a, a gray area between business expansion and uh, activities and workforce development, but currently, as the criteria is written, um, and that is the form that is the foundation under which we are making this recommendation to create this budget appropriation for this activity. Workforce development is not identified as a core activity. Certainly, if it is this commission's wish that um, we consider as we are developing community investment fund strategy, which is described in the um, staff report as that there are this variety of these activities will be coming back over the next 9 to 12 months as we're developing that community investment fund strategy. We can certainly take a look at um, that. But I would also say that, at least for the Measure G, um, that was a, an advisory ballot measure. It did not include workforce development, so we would have to be very, you know, we would, we would attempt to be very consistent with what the voters' will was. And so I, I think the the sentiment that they're connected and they certainly we need to be attaching you know both the existing residents and then and then our you know the existing businesses and the residents and then making sure that we're growing um, for, as part of our succession plan the next generation I think that's very valid I just wanted to point out that we are somewhat constrained in terms of the resources that we have currently available right now what that ballot measure is and then what the 2012 community investment action plans criteria is so we can certainly take that recommendation for and see if there's a way to, um, to, to to live in that space. But right now, this recommendation mm. is living off of that foundational ballot measure and, and documents. So I just wanted to, to, sure. to make you aware of that. There, there's Thank obviously you. a push-pull, right? Absolutely. Right? Like if you're going to bring a bunch of technical jobs here and there's nobody who can do them, those, they're going to hire people from somewhere else. And that investment isn't going to go back to our neighborhoods uh, 
unless they move here. Yeah, and right. I think uh, so. that I want to emphasize too, Ms. Richards also mentioned that part of it was getting people to, it's not just about our existing residents, it's also bringing people sure. who may have those job skills and asking them to contribute to the fabric of our community and, and bring those people and, and bring their their you know their experiences and their culture and, and have it weave into, into improving the quality of life for all of our residents by bringing in potentially uh, people who have those skills. So I just want to add, it's kind of trying to balance all of those things. Totally. Okay, totally. thank you. I hope that better answers your question as well, too. That helps a lot, actually. Thank you. Um, thank I also you. wasn't here back then, so <laughs> it's all new to me. Um, I did have a couple other questions, actually, if, if that's okay. Um, if I may, before we leave no, that sure. topic, I wanted to just um, make sure that you were aware that there is a Yolo County Workforce Development Agency, and they get substantial federal funding to do exactly that. And so that's been um, a link that could be strengthened. Um, but they do, it is difficult to get employers to participate on the on the WIB, the Workforce Investment Board. Um, I believe Denise Seals with, or Denise Donkey with the Chamber is there. So that that is a component that there should be funds to work with Yolo County to do that. And then the last comment I would make is that uh, what I took away from, from your comments is that if we're going to be assisting businesses that internships could and should be a requirement of receiving funds through this business assistance program, which, I mean, I, I think It that could be. I, mean, that, I think also the, like, somebody who might have lost their job to automation, for instance, um, or they may not have the technical skills that they had in a previous job where they employed here in the industrial space, and now, you know, the jobs that we're recruiting for are going to require something slightly different that mm -hmm. requires an educational background that they didn't have an opportunity to get up until that point. And so whether or not that's an apprentice program, an internship for adults, or um, some sort of educational space, I mean, I think those are all worthy things to consider. Are they requirements for the program? I think that remains to be seen in your budget, and you'll make mm -hmm. a, a great decision mm -hmm. either way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think without considering workforce on some level, we have a really hard time saying we're definitely going to make sure that these... Um, investments are actually getting back into the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and that, I'm not saying it's uh, impossible, just saying it's slightly different, challenging. I, I really appreciate those comments. Um, and there are funds, Yolo County has funds available to upskill and retrain mm -hmm. dislocated workers, existing workers. The state of California has an employment training panel right. that can do exactly that, and those are grant monies that go to employers who are willing to retrain individuals. So there are resources there, and I think that's a great a great um, yeah. comment. So thank you. Diane, to um, Crystal's comment about employees. So I'm working on a regional transportation study right now about where people go to work, you know, uh, origin, destination, <laughs> the whole thing. Um, from our zip codes in West Sac, the bulk of our folks are driving every day to the Bay Area and back. So I do think that there's an element hmm. about as we identify who those people are, what companies are they going to work for, and how can we approach those companies and get them to be closer to home. And so I don't know if there's a way to do that other than ask people on Facebook, where do you work? Um, so that's actually part of Greater Sacramento, our regional economic development corporation, Greater Sacramento Economic Council, who we work with and actually did work with recently to re um, to attract Applied Spectra, which is that laser company, laser instrument company. They're moving here from Fremont. Um, so that is a, part, a key part of not only our strategy, but the regional strategy, and really the Greater Sacramento Economic Council is the lead in terms of reaching out to the Bay Area. They have a full-time person or two employed in the Bay Area. They're making pitches all the time in the Bay Area, and we've gone with them on some of those. But that's... That is a key strategy. In fact, they have data points on their website about the number of, uh, you know, the cross commuting that goes on, both our workers going there and them coming here. So that is a huge um, potential market for us um, that, that we are paying attention to. But I, I'm intrigued. I'd like to see the study, and I think that we can learn something from the study and um, perhaps hone our strategy, our recruitment and our reten retention strategy maybe refine it a little more? Yeah, I mean, this what it's census data stuff, but it doesn't say who it is. It just shows traffic flows. Um, mm -hmm, so it is mm -hmm. very illuminating to see mm -hmm. which direction people drive and at what time of day mm -hmm. they're driving and how many miles. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think it's one thing to cast a net and look for a company. It's another thing to, to find a resident who lives here and says, what can we do to get your right. company to move here? Mm -hmm. Your company. 
That's, yeah. Yes. I, I don't know how to do that. If I did, I would have done that already. We'll figure <laughs> we're, West Sac <laughs> we're West Sacramento. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Andrew, you had more questions. Yeah, I had a, a, just a, two more uh, quick questions. So from a industries that you're targeting under the, like, the STEAM kind of methodology, um, are you looking at specific industry verticals that are under STEAM, or are you just kind of casting a broader net and being like, as long as it's kind of science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, is, I guess, just help me, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Right now it's broader brush because we have, you know, we're kind of just tiptoeing into this program. Mm -hmm. um, we could potentially do, but it would be a more exhaustive study to do a target industry study. Um, and it would really make more sense to do that with our regional partners, Greater Sacramento Economic Council. Um, so I think, you know, I guess I don't really know what else we can do on that with existing resources. Um, well, I, I, I wasn't recommending like doing something. I was just curious yeah. what your strategy was. Yeah. So that's yeah. that answered my question perfectly. Right now, yeah, it is pretty broad brush. Okay. Um, and I'll give you an example. Molecular Matrix is a company that was incubated at UC Davis that is now in West Sacramento, and they make um, they actually make a a bone um, of a material that's made out of natural processes that is actually a bone um, implant. Cool. So it's amazing, and they're they located to West Sacramento, so that would be, you know, and, and it would be, I'm not really using industry verticals because, A, they're sort of limiting, mm -hmm. and they can be limiting, and because as a small city, I don't think that we have a cluster, um, I could name one, and that would be ag tech, but mm -hmm. that would really be stretching it. Um, Global Food Hub is another. We do have a base of food food industry companies, but again, um, in terms of a multiplier or a uh, you know a ratio, mm. I think that would be. I think we'd be hard pressed to actually say that we have that cluster. Interesting. Um, but food for thought for another data presentation. Yeah, 20 yeah. years ago, maybe 21 years ago, the city had a report that really targeted right on industries and was like, you know this one and about half of those were emerging industries that never emerged past the eggshell <laughs> <laughs> and so it's what i did and not be that specific yeah. one of them was the fuel cell it was yes yes okay fascinating okay thank you. um my final question actually i think would be for katie because uh, it had to do with part one of the presentation um thank you very much for that by the way sure. um is the process for these loans um, or part of the impact fee, like buy down, I think is the the thing that the term that's used in here. Um, is that a competitive process? Or oh, so yeah. You would, in order for someone to be to yeah, so it would be um, competitive in the sense that anybody could apply for them. Mm -hmm. You would have to satisfy the criteria, and it is a first come first serve. Okay. We have several projects that are sort of we know are in the pipeline, ready to go, and then hit have hit uh, have hit a brick wall. Okay. And so what we want to do is be able to unlock that potential. And since Washington and the Central uh, Business District are part of our, definitely our focused core revitalization areas, these projects stalling not only are preventing those projects from going vertical, but there is this ripple effect of, oh, that project stalled, so I'm going to go focus mm -hmm. my attention somewhere else instead of them building their, ne their second project or their third project here in West Sacramento. And so it's not just that, oh, that 40-unit project isn't going to go forward. Mm -hmm. It's the one that they were planning on doing after that that's also not going forward. And All so right. it's really meant to just very quickly, those handful of projects that we know, um, to unlock them and then overcome that barrier that we've, that we've reached in so that other investment can, can flow in. Very cool. Okay. That, that does answer my question question and as a follow-up to that um, my suggestion is as, as a program for future consideration so not necessarily specific to these projects but down the road um, perhaps something where certain projects that were focused on um, more, more specifically goals that are in your uh, community investment plan that also meet other ones like like either sustainability or affordable housing or, or something along those lines would have like a benefit in the scoring versus other projects like like high value condos or something like that right so I, i'm not i think your plan already addresses that somewhat and i just was having trouble getting my head around it but your description kind of made that clear so um, but just a future consideration 
for that. Thank you. So. Yeah, we'll take that into consideration. Okay. I have a question for Ms. Richards. Ms. Richards. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. In regards to the task two, the $200,000 for the small business expansion, you described that as a as be more of a pilot program and with only $200,000 would basically be a sprinkling to certain businesses. Since it is the first year you are using that, do you foresee the $200,000 as being enough money where you, at the end of a year you could judge whether businesses found it valuable or not? Is it too little of an amount? I, th I think it is, I think we could, I think we would test the program and I think we'd, we'd get what we needed to know. Um, having said that, um, it is a budget request. We do need to go to the city council, so it is not technically approved yet. Um, and I, th what I, what I would hope is that if it's approved and the funding is, is allocated, that we would have enough success stories to prove that it was a factor, that it was doing what we intended it to do. Um, and, you know, I don't know that, you know, I haven't decided, you know, exactly what the recommendation is. Is it 25,000? Is it 50,000? Is it up to 99? And how do, we, how do we determine how much a business gets um, on a particular transaction? So, it might be like I said. It could, if we do 50, if we do 25, we could do a lot more businesses. But it just depends on what that business activity turns out to be. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question. I think I think it would be enough. The first, maybe not the first year, but after the two year, I think we would know whether it was having an effect. Um, and I and I should point out that having a program and being able to articulate that to businesses a lot of times just gets us in the room and gets us into a conversation with a business that may or may not you know maybe on the fence maybe looking at Rancho maybe looking at Sacramento I've had many businesses say to me do you have a program like Sacramento and do you have this other you know and so it is sort of like a you know it is sort of like bait it is sort of like a um, mousetrap if you will um, but that's a, I mean, that's a really good question, and I, I don't know if I have the answer to that, the 200000 Okay, thank you. Thank you again for, for coming by. Um, you mentioned at one point a, a hopeful return of five to ten-fold on your on the investment within one to three years. Can you speak a little bit more to maybe the data that was used to calculate that projection and how that may be achieved? It's really just a... It's just a wag. Oh. I mean, I have, I have a couple of um, potential recruits in mind that I that I know, you know, have a significant investment and have a significant number of jobs that they intend to create, um, and they would they would definitely do um, in that vicinity. So I think that's kind of it was kind of a back of a napkin um, based on current activity. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we need a recommendation to take this plan to council. I make a recommendation for this to go to council. Thank you. Second? Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Take it to council. Thank you. And let me say bless you, whoever figured out how to turn the air on. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Thank you. All right. On to item number five. Consideration of the Sacramento Council of Governments Green Means Go pilot program. Good evening, Vice Chair, uh, members of the Commission. My name is Chris Doherty. Uh, I'm a senior analyst with the Public Works Department. And I handle largely the uh, grant funding and programming of our transportation projects for the city. Uh, the item before you is a brief overview of a program, uh, pilot program that SACOG is launching called Green Means Go. Uh, they're doing this program in partnership with the California Air Resources Board. And the goal is to approach the state um, during the budget process for an allocation to fund um, 
projects within the region that would reduce the level of GHG to meet their um, SCS goals for the blueprint project or process. Um, they've identified three areas that they want to focus on, and that is accelerating infill development, um, increasing transportation modal choice, and electrification of, of the transportation system. Uh, to support this effort, um, SACOG asked the cities of the region to do a couple different things. Um, identify projects that they thought could meet those three goals. Um, identify a green zone for which those projects would live. And to submit an application, a pre-application, so they could have a list of those projects as they approach the state to move forward. Uh, we, we submitted our application on March 15th. Um, and we identified four projects in, uh, four types of projects in that uh, pre-application that kind of focused on two of the buckets and the uh, focus areas that they had. We focused on the accelerating of infill development and uh, the, the increasing of transportation modal choice. Uh, we did not focus on the electrification of the transportation system primarily because we had just received in the last funding round an almost $3 million um, grant to uh, largely increase the amount of uh, electric charging for vehicles, uh, including into the logistics sector um, throughout the city. So we felt we were doing a fairly good job on that. We focused on the, on the other two areas. The projects that we focused on were uh, one, like uh, Katie had mentioned earlier, a developer fee offset program to uh, remove that barrier for infill development uh, from our development community. Uh, and also uh, to fund uh, our microtransit via system for uh, three years. Um, an increased level of that via service. Um, several active transportation projects that would thoroughly connect the city, uh, and also a large infrastructure asked of the west side rail relocation project. Um, SACOG is currently aiming for a four-year program as they have approached the state at a, and targeted $100 million per year for that program. So while we did ask for a fair amount of money for these projects that we thought really unlocked our, our potential for those two areas, it is in line with the level of ask that they are seeking from the state. Um, so uh, with that, um, Tonight we are seeking uh, your direction primarily on the green zone as we will take that back to council if that program moves forward at SACOG to get adopted. Uh, and I'm available for any questions that you may have about the program or the green zone. Christina, how many uh, ideas SACOG got? I don't. Um, they, were, uh, they were mostly focused, I believe, on the in a region of the cities, I just think the projects as you go further out from the core probably had less GHG benefit and probably were not focusing as much on infill development. So therefore, from my read, my loose conversations with staff, they've been mostly focused around more of the regional core. Okay. I know that they would have a hard time asking for money in, since they just got a big pot of money for uh, AB 617 in Sacramento. So. Um, and SACOG has not yet asked CARB for the money, right? So they are partnering with CARB. They currently have a 19% uh, GHD reduction target in the, in the, the current MTP SCS moving forward. Uh, they are now saying they cannot meet that target, so they are identifying these funds with CARB to address that delta. Uh, so they are partnering with CARB to approach the state through the budget process to, to look at those funds and identify that. Okay, and I just realized that we're talking in transportation acronyms. Sorry about that. I did. The Metropolitan Tra Transportation Plan Sustainable Community Strategy, forgive me. Um, and <laughs> CARB is the California Air Resources Board. Did I miss one? No, I think, I hope everybody knows SACOG. Yep. Sacramento Area Council of Governments. Does anybody else have a question? Uh, yes, I have a couple quick questions. Um, does, does, does the VMT goal for reduction, does that come from SACOG or is that a localized goal like based on the individual projects? VMT reduction, the vehicle miles traveled reduction. Of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, there's a direct correlation between VMT reduction and GHG reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we targeted our, our high VMT reduction projects because of that direct correlation to the, the greenhouse gas emissions. 
And are those projects that you've listed here, would they be set in stone if something, you know, if some sort of other grant program came along and said, hey, if you did this and it met the same goals, would you be able to change it down the road or are you kind of set with these four projects? Nothing we have done here in our pre-application set, are, are set us in stone that we can't add new projects. There will be a competitive process if they are successful moving forward, probably this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was really, they wanted, and we had about three weeks to put this together. Okay. So they were on a very advanced timeline. <laughs> uh, so we, we picked a strategy that um, in the two buckets that we identified, the infill bucket and the transportation choice bucket, that both had a one to four year programmatic element that we could start immediately with a large infrastructure ask at the, at the tail end of that. So that we had a, uh, depending on what level of funding that, we, that they did receive, we were very scalable and still very competitive for however else that, that came down because of the questions around their process being so not flushed out yet. So we, we think we created kind of the strategy to put ourselves in the best position there uh, for flexibility and adjustability down the road. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? This is my area. I can talk about this all night. Right. Um, questions? All right. Um, do I have a motion to move this on? Let Chris take this on to council. Uh, I, I so move. Second. Excuse, excuse me, Chair and Commission members. Um, could we make the recommendation in terms of your motion specific that you're recommending that Council approve the green zone boundary? <clears throat> oh, I didn't know that's what we were doing. Okay, do we have a recommendation for Council to approve the green zone boundary? Uh, yes, uh, I'm recommending that the council approved the green zone boundary and I move to vote on that. Okay, do we have a second? Yes, I approve the green zone area. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. So moved and carried. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting. All right, that um, takes us to the bottom of our meeting, which is our next item, our just our general administrative items, uh, commission calendar. Um, good evening, Chair, Commission members. The next regular um, commission meeting will be May 20, uh, 22nd, um, and I believe we already have some agenda items for that meeting. Um, I'd also like to point out in terms of other city events, um, we have April 27th, Saturday, is Arbor Day event at Elkhorn Park starting at 9.30. Um, May 1st um, at 10.30 a.m., there's going to be a ribbon cutting for the completion of the Sycamore Trail Phase 1. That's at 2021 Michigan, again at 10.30. Um, May 2nd is the State of the City um, Mayor's Address in the Galleria. Um, on May 3rd, Friday, we have a Disneyland Resort Star Wars <laughs> movie night at, at Bright Park starting at 7.45 p.m. And on May 5th, on Sunday, we have an intergalactic expo in the Galleria from 10 to 4. Um, do you want me to go into the director's report? Peggy, did you want to add your calendar item? Uh, yes, I have an event coming up on the 19th, which is the West Sacramento Community Annual Picnic. This is our fourth picnic, and it is the day after Chris's event <laughs> that I hope that she shares as well. On um, a group of residents having nothing political or fundraising or anything else to behind it, decided to put together a brunch on May 18th at the Sacramento Yacht Club called WOWS, the Women of West Sacramento. We hope it will be an annual event to really pay tribute to the women who have made a difference in this city. And the first one, we will be honoring every woman who was ever elected to office serving West Sacramento. Um, so I do hope, it's on Facebook, hope you all will join us. Um, should be kind of cool. Sangria bar. Um, and just, Katie, a question. I've got an invitation to a West Sac cleanup day that this Saturday. Is that Ar the Arbor Day thing? Um, no, the cleanup is a, it's a celebration of the cleanup. Um, 
I put it in my calendar and made zero notes about it, so I don't know what it is or where I'm going. I believe it's that, that the port is hosting it. Um, I can definitely send the commission more information about that. Okay, director's report. Um, well, as you know, we, I think you were all invited to the uh, ribbon cutting and uh, in celebration of the completion of the Washington and Grand Gateway infrastructure in March. We completed that project in February. Um, we'll be doing some more technical work that Katie Yancey will be bringing forward in terms of um, amending some more area into the Grand Gateway uh, master plan effort. But um, we, in the next few months, plan to be able to advertise that and put that out for bid to a master developer to, to uh, consider proposals for developing that property. We're also completing a video about the transformation of the neighborhood that we'll be using for marketing purposes um, during that RFP. Um, we held a large public engagement event on the I Street uh, Bridge. We shut down the bridge. It was on March 23rd, and we um, we uh, prepared for it by having lantern workshops, and we also strung lanterns and lit the bridge. Um, it was a, a really big success for the project. The idea was to um, allow the the allow the community to experience what the potential of that deck could be when vehicles and automobiles are relocated to the new I Street replacement bridge and so that they could give feedback about kind of what is, how does the community um, imagine that we can transform that bridge for pedestrians and bicycles. So it was very successful. There's 3,000 attendees and it generated um, close to 900 um, comments um, from the public about the project. So I'd like to play a quick video. We'll see if it works. Yes, can you get the sound on? It says mute. It has sound, but it's we're not getting it to work, but you can get a sound. The, the last item I have um, is next week on May 1st, uh, Council will be awarding a contract to construct the first uh, phase of the Barge Canal Trail on, along the Stonelock property. Um, and that is a culmination of a lot of work that Katie Yancey has been doing on master planning in Stonelock and 
Um, other uh, departments in the city are also, we're mixing funding and resources to get that built. And that's going to construct a paved lit ADA compliant path along the canal. And my understanding is that's a, a path that's heavily used by the community now. So I think it'll be enjoyed that will be ADA compliant and safe and secure for all the users. And um, that's the last item I have to report. So just to back up to the Lantern Festival for a minute. First off, let's say this was Katie's idea, and it was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, not only was it really widely attended, somebody asked me how many people I thought were there, and I said 3,000. So I'm glad to see that was the number you all came up with, too. A um, lot of people there, but the businesses that are at the front of the bridge had their best night ever. Um, Double my care sold out. Other folks ran out of food. It was it was really a benefit, and it shows that at items like that and bringing more people down in their feet and not in their cars can really have an impact on our business district. So it was great. And then my other, I don't know if anybody else went. Anybody else go? The other impression is that that bridge is really, really, really small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, you drive across it, and your mirror's almost touched, but you just don't realize so you're standing on it that it's only like three steps from one side to the other. That is a small bridge. Yes, yes. So, wonderful event. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, future agenda item requests. I'm wondering, I don't know if it's within the purview of our commission, but we heard a lot of discussion tonight about workforce development and what the WIB does and um, what the chamber does. And I don't know if there is a time in the future that we might talk about some of these really specific workforce items, although I will mention we do talk about them at the Chamber of Commerce as well. Big investment in that. So to hear everything that is actually happening in the city about work for to develop our workforce is awesome. We were at a meeting about it just this morning. Okay. So would you like us to bring forward a summary report or Commissioners? If the other commissioners found it useful, I, I personally as a newer resident would think that would be fantastic. But if I'm alone in that, I don't want to bore everyone else. I agree. I think it definitely falls under economic development. Yeah, I think it's also worthy to hear when ideas come to us and we say, we should take this pot of money and invest it in these things. All that stuff's important, but oftentimes they're already being done by another pot of money, and it gives us some clarity to understand that that thing is happening, it's just not happening from you two. Okay. I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. And an item that I am curious about is how you're uh, planning on reaching out to support small businesses and micro enterprises and how to turn a low income earning family into a higher income earning family and what are the tools that the city has in place to make that happen and how are these people accessing those resources because as we venture into putting $100,000 into this um, uh, workforce development, small business, enterprise, um, I just would hate to see it not be recognized and not be available or be underutilized. So um, my thought is, how, how are you getting the word out? And so I would like, um, that's just something I would like to personally know about as a commissioner. Is the, um, the micro business what we're doing in terms of encouraging? This is part of uh, the, the redevelopment, moving into new funds, and how we're going to utilize those funds, and part of those funds are going to be helping to support small businesses and micro businesses, and especially because, because I am so concerned about our low-income families here in West Sacramento and how they can rise up and become a, a higher wage earner. How are we supporting those families that maybe don't have a job but have a great idea? Or, um, or are we giving them great ideas and asking them who wants to open a doggy daycare? Who wants to open an innovation hub? And how can we support you to do that? Is something that I, is, is a missed opportunity that I haven't seen the city um, hook into, although I have seen the small business support groups and, 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 and things like that, but I haven't seen it really targeted towards our most needy individuals. 
Okay, um, we'll, I will talk to Diane and we'll see if, if um, I'll talk to her about how, what kind of data would uh, fall under the policy purview of this commission and, and we'll look to bring it forward in the future. I appreciate the consideration. Thank you. All right. I think with that, we are adjourned at 7.20. I just now saw the sign that says I was supposed to announce in the microphone who moved and seconded everything. So didn't do that. Sorry, person who's transcribing. I got it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're adjourned. Thank you.